We're making a quick video to talk about installing front shocks on a C3 Corvette like this 77 here. We're putting Bilstein Sports on because the previous owner had put Bilstein Sports on the rear and we wanted to match them up in the front. But we were confused because when we got the package we had the shock, obviously, and then we noticed two bushings, the nut that goes on top, but then three washers. A thick black one, a thick uh, silver one, and then a thin silver one. This silver one is quite a bit thinner than the other one, and the hole in the center is bigger as well. You can see in the edge the, the difference in thickness. We were confused about what order to go in because the shocks that we were taking off only had two washers. So I'm going to show you what order they go in that they're supposed to go in here. And this is according to people who bought their shocks and had instructions with them, unlike us. Starting from the bottom to the top, you start with the thick black one, then a bushing, then the thin silver one arranged like this on top so it makes a nice little sandwich like that. Then you would have the A-arm, then the next bushing, the thick silver one on top, again, kind of like a mushroom sandwiched, and then the nut last of all. So here's just a little image of what it looks like when everything's on the shock. These are the ones you'd have to put on before you install the shock. Thick black one, bushing, thin silver one, then you'd have the A-arm, and then these two would go right on the end, like that, along with obviously the nut. Now down here is the top of the old shock before we take it off on top of the A-arm here, and you can see the old washer, the old nut, and then this is the top spindle of the old shock. Now this, these old shocks that are taken off are KYBs, and the top of the spindle is actually square and it just so happens that a quarter inch wrench fits on there so what you have to do is hold a quarter inch wrench on the spindle while you use another wrench on the nut below it to keep the spindle from turning. Uh, the new Bilsteins we're putting on have instead of just a square end like this they have a hex head set inside so you use a wrench on the nut and then you use a, an Allen wrench to hold the spindle steady. So here's the old bushing and washer off the top of the old shock. You can see the bushing is kind of sandwiched and deformed as compared to the nice square thick new one that we've got. Um, the w old washer nut and bushing you can get rid of. What you can't get rid of are the two bolts that hold the bottom of the shock on because uh, those you have to reuse when you put the new shock on. Here's a quick view of the old KYB gas adjust shock I just took off. Uh, you can see the, uh, the, the bushing and the washer that sit under the AR and there's only one washer unlike the Bilsteins that we have to put on and that kind of led to some of our confusion. Uh, as another note, when you torque these, we have read that the top nut should be torqued to 7.5 foot-pounds or about 90 inch-pounds, whereas the uh, nuts on the bottom are supposed to be 150 inch pounds which works out to about 12 and a half foot pounds. Um, this one that I just took off I had to pull as hard as I could to get it off so it was probably a little over torqued on the bottom. Uh, the top ones uh, felt okay. So we're doing this with two people which made it a little easier and to get this in without jacking the car up because we're not jacking the car up we wanted to zip tie the shock compressed so I just put uh, placed the end inside a zip tie placed it on that log over there and compressed it and then we zip tied it closed like this so I'm hoping that it'll just slide up in nice and so now what we're going to do is use the floor jack here we're going to set the shock right on the edge of it jack it up slowly and you can kind of guide it up I put my hand between the tire and the jack so I can guide the bottom and then we can uh, compress the shock and then once it's up there we can put the nuts on here is the top of the shock, new shock after it's been installed. Um, it's supposed to only be torqued to 90 inch pounds and we don't quite have an accurate way to measure that but I'll show you if I can over here. The, ga the big bushing underneath the washer is not really that compressed. It's compressed enough that there's some force on it that the shock's not going to move around, but it's not really greatly deformed either.